that the credibility is probably there. He has a lot to worry about. Once a hot shot for the hit TV show Scrubs, this disgraced Hollywood producer is now headed to trial, accused of committing dozens of rapes over as many years, some even calling him a serial rapist. I think for a very long time, men in power, particularly in LA producers, took advantage of women trying to make it or took advantage of their own reputation with some of these women. You are getting people to understand and appreciate the danger that women find themselves in when men like him do the things that he's accused of doing. Years after some of the alleged assaults, survivors could soon see justice. The evidence that's come out so far is pretty damning. We're taking a closer look at the case of 63-year-old Eric Weinberg, who first made his name as a TV producer in the 90s and early aughts. Weinberg's first major success came in 2001 with the sitcom Scrubs that followed doctors and their careers at the hospital. The show was on for nine seasons and even snagged two primetime Emmys during its run. Weinberg produced 140 Scrubs episodes and would go on to produce another 90 of the Charlie Sheen show Anger Management between 2013 and 2014. Weinberg's name was known in the entertainment industry from these successes, but you probably most recently heard his name in October 2022 when he was charged with multiple counts of rape. Here's criminal defense attorney Serena Townsend. You know, anytime you have a lot of women accusing the same person of this kind of offense, sexual offense, and the women don't really necessarily know each other, um, and the reasons for their outcry or their disclosure of this situation is pretty organic. You know, some of them outcried after seeing him arrested. Um, some of them waited time before telling anybody about what happened because they were afraid to say something earlier. We do see that happen a lot. And so seeing these allegations, men using their power in the entertainment business to lure women or to sexually abuse women is not necessarily uncommon, unfortunately. Um, we are seeing women feeling more empowered these days to come forward and make these complaints. Um, and those are my initial thoughts, that, that the credibility is probably there uh, and that he has a lot to worry about. Serena is a criminal defense attorney now, but she previously worked as a sex crimes prosecutor. I asked her what she thinks of the label serial rapist for Weinberg. Do you believe, based on what we know, that that's true? Well, without hearing the testimony and seeing the evidence, it's a little hard to speculate. But I will say, again, the number of people coming forward um, and from what we already know of the details, the details are quite similar. Usually when you have numerous women coming forward and the details of the events in question are similar, um, you know, many of them mentioned that he choked them, uh, a lot of them discussed kind of his methods of luring them in, and they were the same. He even apparently used some of these women against the others by, by telling the women to vouch for him and to make calls to new women to come over and basically tell them he's safe. Um, those details, as you know, the more unique those details are, the more of a fingerprint it is for, you know, an identification of this kind of person acting in this kind of way, the more credibility the women have. And so I will say that the evidence that's come out so far is pretty damning. According to prosecutors, Weinberg targeted women in their 20s or 30s, meeting them at coffee shops, grocery stores, or even through modeling or dating apps. He allegedly lured these women to his home under the guise of a photo shoot, and instead of taking pictures, would sexually assault them. Some of the accusers have since said they feared for their lives. So to me, hearing these allegations, it sounds like a ploy to victimize women, that he had clear cut intentions that he was going to assault them. Is that what you make of it? Yes. I mean, if what these women are saying is true, and that will be tested in, in court through direct and cross-examination, it does seem like he targeted specific women, specific types of women, possibly, you know, women who might have been impressed with his credentials. Um, men like that, you know, oftentimes will seek out women who will find them impressive, um, women who they will be able to control. And again, that's not on the women, that's on him. That is him using his power, his money, his influence um, over women who just may not realize that 
They could say no or may not be able to say no or escape in time. At the time of Weinberg's arrest, the Los Angeles County District Attorney released a statement reading a part quote, the defendant relied on his Hollywood credentials to lure young women for photo shoots where he allegedly sexually assaulted them. Power and influence can corrupt some to hurt others that often leads to a lifetime of trauma for those who are victimized. You spoke about his credentials, and this is something really big with the case. He was a producer for Scrubs, which was a huge TV show for many years. And all of these allegations take place in Los Angeles, kind of an industry town. So he has this big name project that he's attached to. Is it possible that that gave him some sort of confidence that he wouldn't get caught and could continue this scheme? Sure. You know, we are seeing more and more as more women are coming out against people like him. You know, you have obviously the Harvey Weinstein case and other cases like it. Um, you are seeing people, you know, kind of the tide is turning. I think for a very long time, men in power, particularly in L.A., producers, took advantage of women trying to make it or took advantage of their own reputation. Um, and for a very long time, they had their their helpers kind of hold it down. They had enough power and influence to be able to go under the radar and continue their bad behavior. But as the tide is turning and as people are believing women and, and understanding that, you know, a rapist is not just somebody who's you know, hiding in the bushes and physically able to, you know, overcome somebody that rape happens in a lot of different forums by a lot of different people, including through people who are influential in this way and use threats rather than physical, um, you know, physical power. Although it does sound like he used some physical power as well with some of these women. You are getting people to understand and appreciate the danger that women find themselves in when men like him do the things that he's accused of doing. Weinberg was first arrested in July 2022 and charged that October for multiple incidents spanning between 2014 and 2019. He originally faced 32 counts of sexual battery and rape, but four were dismissed for either lack of evidence or an expiration of the statute of limitations. Just this month, an L.A. County judge announced Weinberg will head to trial after hearing testimony from survivors. He now faces 28 counts. Serena says there are a few reasons for this delay. First of all, apparently the women didn't all come forward at once, which is normal, by the way. It does not mean that it didn't happen. But sometimes people are too afraid to come forward first. And so it's my understanding that there were a group of women who came forward and then a second wave of women after he was arrested and after it was publicized that he was facing these charges, they also came forward after the fact, feeling, I guess, you know, safer and more secure to come forward at that point. That in and of itself is going to delay the prosecution and the charges because it's quite likely that the prosecutor wants to be able to try this case with all of the women possible testifying at once. It makes a stronger case. And so if the prosecution started um, and the process began, but then more women came forward, the process probably stalled with that original group of people in order to allow the second wave of, of people to come forward and for that process to catch up. That and just the fact that the criminal process in general, prosecutions in general, particularly if there are multiple incidents and women, it does take quite some time. I just want to take a super quick break from the case of Eric Weinberg to talk about something serious. As you've just seen, it's so important to know who you're surrounding yourself with. That's where our sponsor of this news package, truthfinder.com, comes in. Truthfinder is one of the largest public record search services, not just across the nation, but the world. Their goal is simple, to help people like you and me learn the truth about the people in our lives. So here's how it works. Go on their website, truthfinder.com, and let's say, for instance, you have a date. Okay, let's say you're going on a date with me. So you type in my name and within minutes, you get access to reports that include info like numbers, addresses, associates, but also any previous arrests and criminal convictions. And this goes without saying, but my Truthfinder record, it's sparkling clean. I mean, imagine not having this information at your fingertips and you meet someone in real life, not realizing the skeletons they have in their closet. Also, if you type in an address, it tells you if there are any registered sex offenders that may live in the area. 
I just moved and I did this and it honestly gave me so much peace of mind. So right now, long crime body cam viewers can get 50% off confidential background reports at truthfinder.com slash lcnews and access information about almost anyone. That's truthfinder.com slash lcnews for 50% off your first month. Now, back to our story. When the case does go to trial, Serena says survivor testimony will be vital for the prosecution. There are, there are cases that exist where the actual victim or survivor does not have to testify, but nine times out of 10, in order for the prosecution to meet its burden, which is beyond a reasonable doubt, that is a very, very high burden to meet. They typically do have to have the actual person making the accusation testify in court. There's also a lot of implications in general if the accuser does not testify. It would be, for example, potentially a violation of the confrontation clause if they did not testify, meaning every defendant has the right to confront their accuser um, you know, with cross-examination and things of that nature. So for the most part, we are probably going to have to expect that the survivors testify in court if they want justice. And because some of these allegations date back 10 years ago, a decade, I'm assuming that DNA isn't still around. So would we be relying heavily on this testimony and circumstantial evidence? Very good question. Um, a lot of times when there is a what's called a delayed outcry, meaning the person does not say what happened to them for quite some time, it does unfortunately weaken the case because of the fact that you can't you know, get a rape kit, for example, and collect DNA. Sometimes people will be um, enterprising and they'll collect their own DNA and hold on to it um, for a while. And police can potentially use that if it wasn't tampered with. But yes, for the most part, if there is a delay in outcry and a delay in an investigation and prosecution, a lot of times the only thing you can rely on is the testimony of the individual who it happened to and possibly the testimony of the people she told. And the defendant in this case, Eric Weinberg, has actually pleaded not guilty. So on the opposite side of things, what could we expect from the defense? Well, the defense may or may not decide to put him on the stand, to put the defendant on the stand. Usually a defendant does not take the stand in a criminal case. It opens them up to a lot of cross-examination, a lot of questions that they do not want to have to answer. And again, the burden of proof really is on the prosecution. And so the defense does not have to put on a case at all. So long as they feel confident and comfortable that they've poked enough holes in the prosecution's case to you know, be able to tell a jury that the prosecution hasn't met their burden, they oftentimes will not put on a case. Sometimes they will put on other people, maybe an expert um, or maybe other witnesses who can say, look, you know, this person is claiming this happened um, on such and such date, but, you know, she said otherwise at this time to me, uh, other people who might be able to discredit the accusers. Uh, but we have to see kind of how the evidence rolls out on the prosecution case before the defense makes a final decision on how they want to present their side of things. After Weinberg's initial arrest, he was released on $5 million bond, but there has since been a major change. Recently, he was remanded back into custody because he was a risk, at least according to a judge. What do you make of that? Can you explain it a bit? Sure. When a judge sets bail, um, oftentimes that bail stays, um, stays put. Um, or if it's remanded, whatever the initial decision from the initial arraigning judge is, usually stays put unless there is a change in circumstances. And it's very important for either side to be able to show that if they want a second judge to make a change to that bail situation, they have to be able to prove um, that there was a change in circumstances. And so here, what I'm making of this is when that second wave of women came forward, the prosecution likely argued, judge, you know, I understand that the previous judge set bail or maybe even you set bail at a certain level, but now look, we have a whole other wave of women who came forward and therefore our case is even stronger. Therefore, he's even more of a flight risk at this point. Um, and so we're asking because of that change in circumstances for you to remand him or at least change the bail conditions. And that's what I believe happened. We also spoke previously in this interview about a different wave of women who came forward. So you had the initial accusers and then as you spoke about a second wave of people. 
Is it possible that there are additional people who come forward during these court proceedings? Sure, it's always possible. Um, especially if you do see a situation where, you know, if proven, he was able to manipulate and sexually abuse and even rape many people, you know, then it's quite possible that there are many more people out there who haven't said anything yet. There are so many reasons why women will or will not decide to come forward. Um, and we have to respect that, you know, sometimes women really are just afraid to do that. And sometimes people look and see and they say, you know what, there's already over 20 women who've come forward. Why do I have to come forward? You know, they already have a slam dunk case. I'll just sit back. You know, I don't really want to be subjected to cross-examination. It's a very traumatic thing for me. Taking the stand may reopen wounds that I've already moved past. So it's possible that there are more women out there who may or may not decide to come forward even still. The case as a whole echoes another story we've been following over the past few months. Now, we know that these are criminal charges, but in the wake of another huge story we've been covering, P. Diddy, which is civil cases and allegations on that end, it just kind of gets me thinking, is it possible that some of these survivors would also file civil suits against Weinberg? It's quite possible, and they do have options. Um, as long as the statute of limitations is still there, and different states have different statutes of limitations, and obviously they'd have to consult an attorney to decide you know, what their options are. But sure, I mean, the burden of proof for a civil case is lower. And so to be honest, if they win at trial, if the prosecution wins at trial for any of these women, and that shows that they've been able to prove the case beyond a reasonable doubt, these women will have a much easier time on a civil case proving their case and hopefully getting some accountability on that front too. As the case moves forward, Serena expects lots of developments. I bet you will have a ton more questions as the case proceeds though, because as anybody who's a litigator can tell you, you know, we all go into trial thinking that the case is gonna go a certain way and every single day things change, especially depending on a judge's rulings. And so this case is gonna be really interesting to, um, to continue to watch and to continue to ask questions about for sure. Again, Weinberg has denied all of these allegations and pleaded not guilty to all 28 charges. He's set to be arraigned in June. Reporting for Long Crime, I'm Sierra Gillespie.